Hello, good day, and welcome to Microcomputer Applications. My name is Kwame Apia from Quaps Networks Training Academy. Today, we want to educate ourselves on the essential understanding of computers and computer operations. The topics we're going to discuss are the term computer, four basic computer operations, data and information, principal components of computer, data storage devices and usage, software, what is computer literacy? Computer literacy is simply the knowledge and understanding of computers and their users. There are a widespread of computers in all walks of our lives today and computers can be found almost everywhere around us. What is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that processes input data according to the instructions given by the programmer and provides the desired information as output. We can also say that it, has an, it is an electronic device that is programmed to accept data as input, process it into useful information and store it for future use. Now, computers are composed of hardware and software. The user is also part, but we can say that the hardware and the software come together to compose a computer system. Now, computers can exist in variety of sizes and configurations. So, in this lecture, we are going to discuss a lot of terminologies used in the definition of a computer. We are going to discuss what data is. We want to say that data is a set of basic facts and entities which itself has no meaning. We want to say information is data which has some meaning or value. Now, when you see or hear instruction, it is a statement given to a computer to perform a task. Input is also data and instructions given to the computer. Process is also the manipulation of data to be changed into information. And then output is also information obtained after processing of data. So we want to look at examples of computers and all these could be examples of computers or are examples of computers. What do computers do? They perform four basic operations, that is input, process, output, and storage. In other words, you can say they accept data, they process data, they store data, and then they output data or retrieve data for effective human understanding. So there's an input, there's process, there's storage, and then there is output. So the computer first accepts 
data such as raw facts, figures, and symbols. Then it processes the data into information and we see information is data that is organized, meaningful, and useful. And then finally, it produces the stored results. We want to categorize computers and we say that the classification of computers is based on according to purpose or according to the technology used or according to the size and capacity. So if we want to classify computers, we can classify them according to their purpose. We can also classify them according to the technology that are used and then we also can categorize them to according to their size and capacity. According to purpose. Now, computers can be categorized or classified according to the utilization of, computer, of the computer for different uses. And according to purpose, we have two main purposes. We have what we call the general purpose computers. Now, these general purpose computers follow instructions for general requirements such as sales analysis, financial accounting, invoicing, inventory, management information, etc. And these are all called general purpose computers. So you get yourself or you find yourself in an enterprise or a particular firm and you see computers that are being used to prepare sales analysis. Those same computers also uh, can be found in the accountant's office that is used to prepare income statements for financial accounting and then for invoicing, for inventory and all other general purposes are called general purpose computers. Now, almost all computers used in office for commercial, educational, and other applications are what are termed general purpose computers. We also have special purpose computers, and these computers are designed from scratch to perform special tasks such as scientific applications and research, weather forecasting, space applications, medical diagnostics and these are all called special purpose computers so you enter the hospital and you have a diagnostic device that's supposed to uh, take a picture of your lungs and that computer was designed from scratch for that purpose now you cannot use those computers to prepare all the general things like uh, general accounting, sales, invoicing, management information, and all that. So these devices are de designed from scratch uh, for specific purposes. That is why we say they are special purpose computers. Now we can also classify computers according to technology used. Now according to the technology used, computers are of three types. We have what we call analog computers. We also have what we call the digital computers and then the hybrid. Now analog computers are special purpose computers that represent and store data in continuously varying physical quantities such as current, voltage or frequency. Now, these computers are programmed by measuring physical quantities like pressure, temperature, speed, and to perform computations on these measurements. 
Analog computers are mainly used for scientific and engineering applications. Some of the examples of analog computers are given below. The thermometer. Now, it is a simple analog computer used to measure temperature. A thermometer, or in the thermometer, the mercury moves up or down as the temperature varies. And then we also have the speedometer, a car speedometer, which is another example of analog computers where the position of the needle in the dial represents the speed of the car. In the nutshell, analog computers simply are, a measure, are able to measure in between discrete values of either one in between one or two. They are able to measure continuously varying points where they are able to measure um, fractions in between discrete values. Let us also not lose sight of the fact that we can also have thermometer and speedometer of the digital version where their processing are of discrete values of zeros and ones. What are digital computers? Now, digital computers are mainly general purpose computers that represent and store data in discrete quantities or numbers. Now, in these computers, all processing is done in terms of numeric representation of binary digits. Although other the user enter data in decimal or character form, it is converted to binary digits of zeros and ones. Almost all computers used nowadays are digital computers. And as we move on, we will discuss in detail the components of these computers in subsequent sections. Now, a hybrid computer incorporates the technology of both analog and digital computers. Now, these computers store and process analog signals, which have been converted into discrete numbers using analog to digital converters. Now, they can also convert the digital numbers into analog signals or physical properties using digital to analog co converters. Now, hybrid computers are mainly used in artificial intelligence, robotics, and computer-aided manufacturing, which we also call, or which has examples as process control. Now, we can also Classify computers according to their size and capacity. So, computers that fall within these categories are supercomputers, mainframe computers, mini computers, microcomputers. So, what are supercomputers? Now, supercomputers are the biggest and fastest computers which is mainly designed for complex scientific applications. Now, they have many central processing units which operate in parallel to make it as a faster computer. Now, the processor, which is an integrated chip, supercomputers have multiple processes that share the task that are supposed to be done or the processes that are supposed to be done on data and makes it uh, extremely fast or fastest computers. So sometimes you hear uh, some of the computers have multiple processes. For example, you have a dual core computer, you have a quad core computer. A dual core computer has two processes, a quad core computer has four processes. Uh, you have an octa-core, 
that has eight processes and 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 it goes on and on depending on the capacity so you see that then the higher the number of processes the more it processes data in a very faster manner or a very fast manner now it is typically used for the following applications weather forecasting now the weather station uses this type of supercomputer to be able to perform complex weather calculations for them to be able to provide you the weather information for the valid 24 hours or any other duration which may be deemed appropriate by the weather forecaster now they are also used in petroleum exploration and production they are also used for nuclear energy research electronic design real-time animation and medicine Now we want to talk about a mainframe. Mainframe computers are also very large and fast computers but smaller and slower than supercomputers. Now these are used in a centralized location where many terminals are connected to the computer and thus allow different users to share a single CPU. Now they have a very high memory several hundred megabytes and can support thousands of users now these type of computers can be found in the railway and airline reservation they can also be used or found in the banking application and can also be found or used in commercial applications of large industries and companies Now, mainframe computers usually have many terminals connected to them. And these terminals look like small computers, but they are only devices used to send and receive information from actual computer using wires. Terminals can be located in the same room with the mainframe, but they can also be at different buildings or cities now large businesses government agencies and universities usually use this type of computer what is a mini computer mini computers are medium scale smaller and generally slower than mainframe computers now they have many terminals like the mainframe which are connected with one CPU and can support many users. But the cost of a mini computer is very less as compared to a mainframe and therefore it is mainly used in applications where processing can be distributed among several mini computers rather than using a mainframe computer. What is a microcomputer? Now, this type of computer is the smallest digital computer which uses a microprocessor as its central processor or the CPU. Microprocessor is a single chip which we call the integrated circuit. So, the CPU is an integrated circuit chip. Microcomputers are popularly called or also known as personal computers PCs. It can be used both as a standalone machine and a terminal in a multi user environment. Now, these computers have become very popular nowadays due to very high processing power and memory. Today, a powerful microcomputer may be used as a substitute for a mini computer. Actually, they have been the, sus the substitute for all these 
mainframe computers and mini computers. The microcomputer can be classified into two types. We have the workstations and we have the personal computers. We want to look at the different portable computers. We have the laptop. We have the notebooks. We have the palm tops or the handheld computers. We have, we have the wearable computers. So these are examples of microcomputers and Now we want to look at the computer system. The main computer system is made up of the hardware, the software, and the user. The hardware consists of the physical components of the computer system that can be seen and touched. If you can feel it, we say that constitutes the hardware. Now the software lies in the middle and consists of unseen aspects of the computer that act as a link between the hardware and the software. We want to look at the four primary components of the computer system. We have the keyboard and the mouse, which are the main input devices. We also have output devices as monitor and speakers, which are the main uh, output devices. We also have processing devices, which is the central processor, which we have already uh, introduced as an integrated circuit, which turns data into information. And then Anything that has been processed will have to be stored for future use. And the memory is, is, is the component that holds data for all other things to be done in the computer system. Now, what is an input device? Now, input is the process of sending data and instruction into the central processing unit. Hardware used to enter data and instruction is termed as an input device or is termed input device. Now, these devices accept instructions and data from you, the user. The mostly commonly used ones include the keyboard and the mouse. Now, the others, which are also input devices, but are not the main input devices, are called computer peripherals or peripheral devices. So if you pick an input device and you see keyboard and a mouse as the main input device, the other peripheral devices, that brings enhancement and also satisfy a user's what, need to use them. We have examples such as the touch sensitive screen. We also have the microphone for voice input device. We also have the optical mark recognition for the reading of barcodes, image processes, and we also have the scanner, the magnetic card reader. All these are input devices but not the main input devices for the computer system but they become input devices as peripheral devices when as and when they are needed for use so here the arrows here show uh, input devices and then you can see input device you can see a microphone you can see a digital camera 
you can also see the keyboard which is the main input device you can see a mouse which is also an input device or the main input device you can see a webcam which also sends data and instructions into the computer system for processing and then you can see a scanner and many others we cannot mention here what is an output device now output is the process of getting information out of the computer system so hardware that conveys information to a user is called output device and the main output devices are the monitors and printers now there are basically two forms of monitors and today we can see there are several forms because new newer technologies have emerged we have what we call the cathode ray tube and we have the the type that we call the liquid crystal display now the crt based screen or monitor looks similar to a television set now in our part of our world uh, in Africa, for that matter, Ghana, we normally call it the etikopo, or the ones that look like a television, we call it the etikopo. But if you are looking at this video, or watching this video for your understanding, internationally, we call them the monitors that look like television. Now, an LCD-based screen displays the visual information on a flatter and smaller screen than the cathode ray tube-based video monitor. Now, LCDs are frequently used in laptop computers. Now, the LCDs, which we call the liquid crystal display, when you press it, you see a liquidish crystal appearing on the screen so as i press the screen you may see some kind of liquid that is showing on the screen at various points as i press and we call it the liquid crystal display they all have the advantages but the lcds have advantages over the crts now the monitor's output or the information that comes out of a monitor is termed as a soft copy. Soft copies cannot be touched, they can be read, they can be seen, and cannot be touched. Now, the printer displays output in a permanent media, mostly on a paper, and we call that hard copy. So the hard copy are copies of what? Information from the computer system that can be handed, that can be felt, and that can be placed somewhere. Other types of output devices include the voice outputs, the music output devices like the multimedia speaker. We also have the plotters. So you can see the arrows pointing to some of the output devices you can talk about. So you see the monitor, and then we have the speaker. We also have the printer, which brings out the hard copy. The monitor displays a soft copy. We also have the speaker, and many others we may not have captured so we look at the flat screens which carry the lcds and even newer technologies are have what have sprung up which we call the led leds the light emitting diodes and they also carry their own technology on how to display uh, information on screen now, in our subsequent videos, we, we are going to talk about ergonomics in computing.
ergonomics. Now, ergonomics in computing has to do with the related stress associated with the use of computing devices and accessories. And when we discuss that, we are going to know or we are going to learn some of the advantages of using an LCD over CRTs with respect to re repetitive strain injury that happens to the eye and their solutions. So you stay tuned for our next video which is going to talk about computers and ergonomics or ergonomics in computing uh, and it will mainly talk about related stress uh, with the usage of computers and their solutions and that is when we are going to know or find the advantages of LCDs, the LEDs over the slim CRTs or over the cathode ray tubes. What is processing? Now, processing is simply the act of converting the data into information. Now, operations performed on data to provide useful information to users is termed as data processing. Now, the input device feeds data raw or unprocessed facts into the processing units and the work of the processing units or the central processor is to use the program that is stored to manipulate the input data into information required. In looking at the computer system, the processor is not exactly visible, but can be found inside the system's unit. So you see the arrow showing what the system's unit is. And the system unit is just a case or a box-like case containing electronic components used to process data. So the central processor itself can be found in the system case. So this is the system case. And then the processor that manipulates data into information is embedded on the mother board, which is the main circuit board of the computer system and all can be found in the computer's case. So this is what can be found in the system unit. So the motherboard which is the main circuit board has a lot of components that are what embedded on them which communicate with each other through bus lines for effective electronic transfer of signals and instructions. So in the systems unit, you can have the storage units. You can also have the power supply unit. And the power supply unit is the main power supply system for the computer and then you have the central processor this is the central processor or the processor that is found on this motherboard that changes raw data into meaningful information and then we also have the memory Then we also have the video card. Then we also have the sound card. So the power supply unit, we have the optical drive, we have the floppy disk drive, we also have the hard disk drive, we also have the motherboard, and then we also have expansion slots. Now these expansion slots on the motherboard gives access to other connecting uh, devices. So if any other device or any other <coughs> component wants to make a connection with this computer system, 
they are, they are normally used for those connections. So the expansion slot can be there to have additional memory memories installed. They can be there to have additional cards, uh, which will be so either a video card or either a network interface card or whatever card you want to install for whichever enhancement or purposes can be can be connected through the expansion slots. So the components of the systems unit are what I enumerated here. You have the power supply unit, you have the data cables, you also have the hard disk drive, you also have the optical drives, you have the motherboard, you have the video graphic card, you have the memory. You have the central processor and then you have the fan that cools the central processor. Now the central processor or the central processing unit is the brain of the computer. The CPU consists of an electronic circuit that interprets and executes instructions. Now it communicates with the input the output, and then the storage devices. The central processor, with the help of the memory, executes instructions in a repetition of cycles. <clears throat> so, the processor executes instructions with the repetition of cycles and we call them the machine cycle and these are consisted in four steps now the central processor is made up of the control unit and then the arithmetic logic unit now the control unit fetches an instruction and data associated with it from the memory now the memory is a storage system where data and instruction, actually it is what holds uh, whatever is being done in the computer system. So the memory is there to hold data or that is being worked on in the computer system and it's dependent on electricity. So when a computer is switched on, the the operating system boots into memory. Now it is from the memory that any information that has been sent into the computer system recites. And then when it is found in the memory, the control unit fetches an instruction and data associated with it from the memory. Now the control unit decodes the instruction. So when the instructions has been sent to the memory by the user, the control unit decodes the instruction that has been sent and then leaves it to the arithmetic logic unit to execute that instruction. So the arithmetic unit, after execution of the instruction, stores the results back into the memory. So the first two instructions, which has to do with the fetching of instructions and data associated to it from memory, and then the decoding of that instruction is what we call the instruction type, I type. Now, steps three and four, which has to do with the ALU, executing the instruction, and then storing the results in memory, is what we call execution time. So the first two operations of the processor is called the I time, and then the last two are called execution time. Now, the smallest unit of measurement of the computer, of the speed of the computer, is in hertz. So as it increases, it moves on to megahertz, gigahertz, and then higher. 
So these are all examples of processors. We have a processor made by Intel as a company. And then we have a processor made by AMD also as a company. <coughs> So the Tricentral Processing Unit, also called a processor, is a device that interprets and runs commands that you give to the computer. Now, it carries out instructions and tells the computer what to do. So the two major ones are mentioned earlier, Intel and AMD. So examples of Intel are or two new AMD Turians uh, are also examples of what AMD processors. Now the memory, the memory which is also known as primary storage, is the temporary or temporarily holds a place for data and instructions. Now, it works with the CPU to hold instructions and data in order to be processed, like as I explained earlier. Now, memory is the first place data instructions are placed after being input. Processed information is placed in memory to be returned to the output device. It is very important to note that memories can hold data only temporarily because it requires the continuous flow of electricity, as explained earlier. If current is interrupted or light goes off, data in the memory is lost. Memory is in the form of semiconductor or silicon chip that is contained inside the computer system. So this is an example of a memory. Now, this is a simple circuit board that has a lot of integrated circuits on it. And I believe these integrated circuits on it are the components that are able to store or hold data and, data and information uh, when there's a continuous flow of power in the computer system. Now, we have two types of memory. We have the read-only memory and then the random access memory. Now, the read-only memory contains programs and data that are permanently hardwired into the computer. And that is when the computer is manufactured. It is read and used by the processor, but cannot be altered or edited by the user. But the random access memory gives the user access to data in the RAM randomly. Now, RAM can be erased or written over at will by the computer program or the computer user. Now, the amount of RAM has increased dramatically in recent years. Memory is measured in bytes. And a byte is usually made up of eight consecutive uh, binary digits. Bytes are usually measured in groups of kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes, and even more. The RAM is also regarded as the primary storage device. It stores data temporarily when processing is taking place. The data it holds is lost when power is gone. So, if we want to talk about a byte, a byte is approximately 8 consecutive bits. If we want to talk about a kilobyte, it means that we want to talk about a roughly 1000 bytes. If you want a megabyte, is roughly 1 million bytes. If you want a gigabyte, it's roughly 1 billion bytes. And then we want to talk about a terabyte, 
we were talking about a trillion bytes and over. Now, storage devices. Now, since we have said that memory is in the form of chips and must maintain a constant flow of electricity, there must be a more permanent form of storage that does not depend on the constant flow of electricity. The form of storage or this form of storage is called the secondary or the auxiliary storage. Now the benefits of secondary storage are large space capacity, reliability, convenience and economy. Now, magnetic disk storage is a very popular type of storage which we normally call the floppy disket or the floppy drive as an external disk drive. Now, this is an obsolete storage device. Now, this storage uh, system, this device normally had a, high, a capacity of 144 megabytes. Uh, of data that can be stored on it and this has now been replaced with the flash drives now the floppy disk drive which we also call the three and a half drive and used to use diskets made of flexible mylar and coated with iron oxide a substance that can be magnet magnetized a diskette records data as magnetized spots on the tracks of its surface. And a floppy disk can hold 1.44 megabytes, or a zip drive can hold 100 megabytes. Now, the hard disk, which is an internal disk, is a metal plater or platter coated with magnetic oxide that can be magnetized to represent data. Hard disks come in a variety of sizes and can be assembled into a disk pack. A hard disk is capable of holding a great deal more than floppy disks. Hard disks for personal computers are measured in gigabytes. Remember, a gigabyte is roughly a thousand bytes or a thousand floppy disks so this is an example of a hard disk so while the size of data capacity of a hard drive is very important the speed of accessing the data is equally important files on hard drives can be accessed significantly faster and more conveniently than floppy disk drives or floppy drives Included in the list are other types of storage. We have the CD-ROM or the DVD read-only memory. Now, the CD-ROM, which we call the compact disk read-only memory, can hold up to 700 megabytes of data. The DVD, which also called a digital versatile disk, uh, could also hold. 4.7 gigabyte capacity, which is about seven times that of the CD-ROM. Now, all these type of storage systems have become obsolete or are becoming obsolete with the advent of new technology. But it is only imperative that for the purposes of studies, students or practitioners will know about certain types of storage and acknowledge them. Now, the flash drive is also one of the secondary storage devices which we normally use today. So, in order to protect the data on your hard drive, you should have a backup system. A backup system is a way of storing data in more than one location for easy access when there's loss of data. Now, magnetic tape 
is usually used for this purpose. The magnetic tape is an inexpensive type of storage. It looks like the tape used in audio cassettes. In order to function properly, a computer system must have all four types of hardware, the input processor and output device. If you have any question, you can type in in the in the YouTube column and I'll respond to you. God bless you and thank you for being with us. The next then we are going to discuss will be on YouTube and we are going to discuss ergonomics in computers. Thank you so much.